So, welcome to part two of this uh, baking uh, complex um, compound models um, tutorial. So, in this part, we'll be looking at the substance painter bit. So, in part one, just a quick rehash, we've exported our low and high poly versions of our model uh, to FBX, and we're ready to begin the process of setting up and baking in Substance Painter. So let me begin by making a new project. For armor related things I use Spec Gloss PBR um, and uh, if you do work on armor projects I would not rec I would really recommend using that because it, it outputs really the maps that can be actually um, then converted directly into um, uh, real, let's say, ARMA style maps straight away without you having to do anything. Again, in increasing the speed at which you can just uh, retouch something very quickly and load them into uh, your projects. <coughs> um, but I will talk about our, my expert presets also in this uh, video. So I'll select uh, 248. And I will load up my low poly model and I will not touch anything else. So, straight away, uh, what's important to note is what I talked about having those uh, pink and, and um, sort of desert colors in my LP. As you remember, I assigned two different materials to break out the texture sets. And you see that uh, Substance Painter recognized that my turret and hull are two different textures. Which is very nice because they will have their own layers and in the end when I export them they will be actually two different textures. The great thing in Substance Painter uh, since not that long ago is that you can actually uh, duplicate layers across texture sets. So if you created really so, some awesome procedural textures for your hull uh, you would like to apply them to your um, to your turret as well and just go ahead and either create smart materials uh, based on your folder setup or you can actually um, instantiate across texture sets which is really great uh, but again the actual texture techniques is not for this video but what I want to show is that materials applied on a low poly trans transform into different texture sets and that way you don't have to import just the, the turret, work on the turret, then close it and work on a whole separate file. No, you can have everything ready for yourself. Do keep in mind that you can also hide them and hide different parts. So I'm just going to have 3D only. So we've prepared all our stuff for baking and this is uh, the crucial moment where we can uh, really get the most out of, out of our high poly before we start texturing and I, like I said I'd like to make sure that uh, the baking is top notch before moving on to texturing because it just saves it all the time. Um, um, before we move on, I'd like to talk a little bit about my texture presets, so that it means transforming the um, actually, let me save this real quick as a model. Um, when I'm done texturing and I would like to export to all the files that I need in Arma, I can actually use uh, what you have as uh, configuration settings uh, that I created specially for Arma 3. And that means that I can save my ambient shadow, my normal maps, my spec gloss maps, and my diffuse texture all in one go uh, using all the information that I have in my uh, layer stack. So my ambient shadow will use uh, the opacity output in red, opacity output in blue, and I will do my mixed AO, which is this one from Convert Maps in the green channel. 
for normal map, I just use the normal DirectX RGB output. So that would be this one. In my spec gloss map, I will use opacity, which would be just completely white for most cases. In the red channel, so that's opacity. I have specular, which is for my input maps here in the green channel, and I have glossiness, which is uh, again for my input maps in the blue channel. And for the diffuse texture, I will use the diffuse RGB as output and uh, opacity again as alpha. So that's the configuration I use. And if I actually select it here, you will see that for both my textures, then I'll get the whole texture set needed for uh, for armor materials, which is very nice. <coughs> um, that also means that in my texture set settings, I'm missing for both cases for both my textures. I'm missing opacity, which will be just flat white in most cases. And um, again, if I change the other texture set, so add just to add. Uh, that's very important because in Substance Painter you can use these channels to draw a lot of other auxiliary things. For instance, I uh, also use Substance Painter to draw um, my thermal maps. And I have another separate TI export where I use things like anisotropy angle, anisotropy level, and emissive channels. Uh, to do this, which means that uh, they, they don't add anything to the display here, but in fact I can just add a layer, switch off visibility to all except in this, in this entropy angle, and there paint my thermal textures. So that's one clever way of using this export uh, configurations. Um, but now we're ready to begin some baking. Um, Let's straight away choose ten, uh, 2048. We don't want diffusion because this basically, um, let's see, dilation is how far past the edges of the UV islands it, the, the, let's say, the, will go. So you would want this to be quite high for 2048. We can actually bump it up to 16 or something. But just make sure that you don't have edge clipping and don't apply diffusion because diffusion will actually blur it out and potentially get onto other UV islands. We import our high definition mesh. We don't use cage because we haven't made one. And that's very important because this is why we will actually have to bake uh, our normal maps twice. <coughs> and uh, in our case, we will have to make one with average normals and one without. And you will see why in a second. But the reason is really because we don't use a cage. So let's bump up maybe some distances. Um, we'll ignore back facing, it's fine. Uh, you would like to ideally put up some subsampling. I will not in my case because. Uh, I want it to be a bit fast for this demonstration. The matching I will set by mesh name. So this was the reason why we actually separate into different meshes. And fix up your suffixes to line up with how you named your uh, models. So I applied HP and OP suffixes and max to my object. So we'll see that uh, hull one HP maps onto hull one LP. So that was set up. So the first one I will bake was without average normals. For ID map, we will choose material color because that is what we actually use to define our uh, ID maps and in max, remember? So material color and apply to all, so both, to both texture sets. And in the occlusion, I, I find the defaults work quite well. These you can tweak at your um, uh, at your pleasure. I, I usually leave them as default, and I'm not too too worried about. So let's bake all texture sets. And remember, I set uh, average normals to off. 
And that's a very important distinction. So now we have to wait a little bit for it to be our first pass. While it's baking, it's, uh, I would like to note that it is quite important to bake all the maps because um, they all play can play some role in a lot of the procedural uh, things that a substance, substance Painter can do. So um, even things like curvature, position, thickness can be used to generate some really cool effects. So. I would really advise to bake everything, have everything, tweak a little bit around with the settings um, uh, so that, that they're all perfect and you will get really, really nice results in the end. So let's have a look at our, at our bake. And from the looks of it, it already looks pretty nice. Even that this resolution without subsampling -sam there's a few maybe errors that you would go back and, and tweak the, let's say, the distance. Uh, like you can see, there's maybe our distance was a bit too high, and you actually see um, some of the geometry get reprojected. So you would go back to your bake, maybe put down the frontal distance and the rear distance a little bit. Um, so I would do for my normal map. For the hole, okay, so that's the select hole. And what did I do? To select all the rest because probably those worked fine. Yeah, so you don't have to rebake everything all the time. You can go one by one, but what you want is these spaces in this area to fill up with information. So look, we still have some artifacts, but okay. Uh, I think you will get the idea once you get the hang of tweaking um, that everything can go quite nice. So, why do we bother with um, original rules or not? Now, something you might see here is that with average normals off, these areas where we had uh, sharp edges are basically really not that smooth. You see this, this, this seam there, but flat surface detail bakes really, really quite nicely. So maybe if I can bump this to OK. More detail, not really because we baked at 2K, but um, but with average normals turned off, flat detail bakes very very well. Um, with average normals on, the flat detail starts to distort because it averages out the normals, as the name suggests. So what we do want to achieve is somewhat of a um, a balance between the two, and uh, it can be achieved in the following way. I will show you in a second. So let's imagine that our bake went perfect. We didn't. We tweaked everything we needed to tweak, and 
where we fixed all the areas, and so on. Uh, now we need to bake with average normals on. Actually, we actually should do with average normals on first, to be honest. Yeah. So bake your average normals. I'm just doing it for the whole, but you would ultimately do it for the whole. Uh, model, so I would do it with for turret and the whole at the same time, just to save time. I would demonstrate in one. And you see, when I bake with average normals on, there's no seam anymore. So edges get treated very nicely, but flat surface distortion is very visible. So we have really some, uh, especially objects that, that uh, stick out quite a bit from the surface, they end up looking very bad. Uh, and that's really the reason why we, why we need to do this. So, with average normal bake still there, I'll go to my textures, I'll find my normal map for hole. Yeah, so this one. And I will do export resource. So folder. And it will get saved there. Now what I do need to do is find this folder. Drive. You can see this file is there. So I would call it full average. And I drag it back into my textures. It tells me, okay, what is this? What, what is this? I don't understand what this is. So I call it texture. And I want to import it to this project. So I, I'm not going to use it in any other project. And now it's there. So what I'm going to do is first in my texture settings change normal mixing to replace and add a uh, fill layer. Yeah. I'm going to Turn off all channels except normal, and I'm going to add this normal to this to the normal channel. I'm going to call it average. So remember, average is good for edges, not good for planar. So then, and this is why you should do average first. Then I have to go back again and bake my. The average one is off quite quickly. And really pray that my screen recording does not crash now. Please, please, please. Okay, I'll go back and find my normal map for the whole. So now it's the with normal with average is turned off. Ah, well, actually we don't see it because we we have the other one overlaying. But if I turn this average one off, I can see that uh, what I have now applied is. The, the one with never well, ever just turned off. But I would keep it this way, but what I want to do is in your normal way, I want to apply a uh, I 
think it's in generator. In the generator that I want to apply is UV borders. And what UV borders does is create a mask. Um, actually, no, sorry. For some other black mask. And then apply a generator here on the mask. And again, UV border. And what it does is that it allows us to blend along the UV borders how much of this average normals are being used. And by setting it to zero, uh, you do see that we have um, complete replace. So what I'm going to do now is actually the same thing we did before. I'm going to export this resource. So the same folder. And name the file to a whole one average reimport it as a texture to this project choose my textures and another make another fill layer again with only normals and add my non average node So we see that this one has UV distance set to zero, but if we start tweaking the distance and apply normal blending here, you can see that we can blend those seams out. And this is the trick to really good bakes. Is that we keep the, the beauty of the planar surfaces without distortion and still have uh, perfectly rounded edges where they need to be. And you can play around with this, but uh, this is basically what you have to do to get really good bakes. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is it for video two. Uh, at this point of your workflow, you would get your bakes totally good and then you can start playing around with your materials. Um, and if at any point uh, you notice some, some weird artifact, you can always go back and rebake without losing all the texturing work. Uh, so this is a really great workflow to, uh, to support you. And then just export the files that you want, set them up into RDMats and you're ready to go. All right, see you guys.